Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle one of the Blood Ravens, who are a mysterious space marine chapter of uncertain origin. And they came into the world with the advent of the Dawn of War game franchise. I happened to be working with Games Workshop when that came out. Oh boy. <laughs> I cannot tell you what a difference it made being able to see the cutscenes in that in that game and you know space marines running around and actually doing stuff it was cool it was a, a real game changer and blood ravens have since then become a real fan favorite now unfortunately I painted this fella he was part of the video last time around and then my phone this cheerful little mon monster here uh, ate the video so I've got here another and he is going to stand in and we're going to get him from this to this all right so blood ravens colors and we'll follow along with that now on this chappy here you might notice i've actually got a molded shoulder pad and i've got a bit of a different helmet something that looked a bit cooler a little bit more sort of crusade style looking stuff and i thought that was pretty neat these both are free available on thingiverse i 3d printed them if you don't have access to one of those, you can, of course, uh, find a service online. I'll drop a link to the files for these two. So if you like the look of them, you can check them out. Or same as I did with this chappy over here, you can just assemble them like normal and then paint them up as your blood ravens. But without any further mucking around, and hopefully the camera's going <laughs> to cooperate with me this time, let's get into it. Now, because our blood raven is going to be red... No great surprise, I've used Mephiston Red Spray to prime him. Now after that, I've gone over him with a thin coat of Mephiston Red from the pot, just to make sure that the base coat is going to be nice and smooth. And if any bits I've missed, you know, we can get in there with the brush and very quickly bap that in. So that's not particularly exciting or difficult. I've skipped that bit off the camera. What I've got now is some Eldar Flesh, and I'm just working this into my dry brush. It might seem a bit of a surprise, but I've actually found it really interesting to use uh, skin tones, particularly a Kislev Flesh is another good one for this. Over red, of all things, and it works really well. So I've got my brush. I'm just going to quickly check on the edge of the base there what kind of a amount of paint I'm going to leave behind off my dry brush. And then we're going to very lightly just go around and start catching all of the edges of the armor. We want to get those nice details caught with a little bit of Eldar flesh. Now I do recommend take your time and go around any areas that you think it doesn't look quite good and give it a second pass because it's easier to build up the color than it is to put too much on in one go because if you do that with a dry brush you're going to have to go back to your base coat and start over again. So oops, take your time there and like I said less paint is better. You can always add more. So going against the edge of any detail come back and have a look at what this fella looks like once we've covered him in skin tone. Now it doesn't look the greatest. <laughs> After just one pass, you know, you've got quite chalky edges, especially around any rounded edges. Uh, surfaces like knee pads and the bobbly bits on the back of the power plant, they will tend to catch that dry brush a little bit more than, you know, any flat edges. So you'll find that sometimes you're going to get that slight, I guess, rounded shading effect. But because we're going to shade over the top of that, that's actually going to work to our advantage. I've got here my Caraberg Crimson and a shade brush. I've given this a good shake and we're going to be pretty generous with this. This is why I recommend you probably want to go a little bit overboard compared to what you might think with that first dry brush. So let's just go all over the miniature and we're going to make sure that this is getting into all of the recesses, but painting it over all of the flat areas too. Now you'll see on the shoulder pads I've done you know next to nothing and that's because we're going to paint those a very different color later anyway they're not going to be red they're going to be black and that cool sort of bony beige color so I just need to concentrate on the armor itself now let's go around fill in all of the armor with caribou crimson and come back in about half an hour get a look at how that looks once that's dried now doesn't that look better with a little time to dry, our marine is finally looking a little bit more sensible. We've taken some of the sort of bright, shiny edge off of that dry brush, but we've still got our nice highlighting and a little bit of the sort of curvature on some of those flat panels and rounded edges looks just a little bit better when it's blended in that light color with a darker one beneath. All just dry brushing in shades. 
Now what I'm going to do now is actually skip ahead a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and paint in all of the details like his chest eagle and his bolter and what have you because I've done those before. And there's only so many times I can tell you, get the lead belcher and paint, you know, <laughs> there's some real simple stuff. We're just going to concentrate mostly on the armor here. So I'm going to go ahead and get that finished and then we'll come back and have a look at how to finish off the shoulder pads as one of the last touches on the model. Now there's a couple of shades drying on there at the moment. You might see that slight glossiness on the uh, metallic stuff, but while that's drying, as long as we're careful, we can get on with the next step and that's going to be those shoulder pads. Now I have got a molded shoulder pad, like I mentioned. Uh, there is an excellent tutorial for painting the chapter badge for the Blood Ravens on Warhammer TV, which I will link to in the description below. But if you happen to have one there, all the better. You know, I am all fingers and thumbs personally when it comes to painting details like that. Now what I've got is a little bit of black. You might see me thinning it out with just a little bit of water, so it's going to flow off my brush. And it might seem counterintuitive to do the trim first, but because we can afford to be oops, a little bit messier. Uh, I don't want to hit any of the red on the armor itself, but if I happen to splat in the uh, the shoulder pad itself, it's not going to matter because we're going to paint over that in a couple of seconds. So now take your time, go around and just fill off the, uh, the black shoulder trim. And once that black is dried, grab yourself some Rakarth flesh and we're going to put Ushabti bone over the top of it. This will probably take a couple of thin coats to get a nice smooth finish. It's going to be important on those shoulder pads. So as always, just a little bit of water in your paint and just take your time. All you got to do is fill in the shoulder pad with this simple color. And then follow up with a little Ushabti bone. Same as always, just a little bit of water in here. And this you will almost definitely find is going to need two coats. So Put your first on, let it dry for about five minutes, and then come back to give it a second. Now with that second coat of a Shepti Bone on the shoulder pad, jobs are good and we've got our finished Blood Raven. Now I have gone quickly in and just painted on the chapter badge that was molded onto the shoulder pad. Again, I'll link to that uh, tutorial over down in the description. I've also quickly batted on a couple of little highlights here and there, the purity seal and the gun. Now let's quickly get a base on him and see what it looks like in context. There were those last details and his base complete. Our Blood Raven is done, ready to take to the field of battle and maybe help the Imperium? Maybe? <laughs> Their providence is a bit of a mystery. So I really like these molded shoulder pads. They're pretty easy to get hold of if you don't mind paying a little extra for them to get printed, or you can print them yourself at home. Like I said, you can also paint it on if you're feeling brave. I'm not. <laughs> I'm never, never one to paint uh, chapter badges on myself if I can avoid it. So hopefully, guys, something there was interesting to you. In particular, I really like using a skin tone over red to give you a slightly different and less orange looking finish to it, which works pretty well for these darker styles of armor. Separates it a little bit from the Blood Angels in that respect, I think. Any questions, feel free to drop it in the old box below. I know a few of you have been waiting for the Blood Ravens for a long time, so I'm glad to finally get these guys done and do it a second time. Because, you know? <laughs> like I said, having to do it a second time just to get this bleeding thing finished, well, I might as well finish a squad now, right? Maybe it's time for a Blood Ravens kill team. So, like I said, feel free to drop a line, and as ever, guys, thank you very much for your time. You enjoy the rest of your day.